My name is Joan Corbett Dine, and I was a new mother and homemaker in 1971, and the former director of recruiting for the Peace Corps, deputy director. Basically, I had a very young new baby. I was nursing the baby. My husband comes home after work on March 26th of 1971 and said, I believe there's a genocide that is beginning. And so it's, it's just sympathy for individual human beings is why. Because there were so many Bangladeshis coming up onto Capitol Hill and speaking to him because we had both spent two years in India. And um, he suggested they needed to get organized because he was sympathetic, but they needed to influence Capitol Hill. And so a coordinating organization was needed. And uh, Dr. Nalen and Dr. Greeno, or I think they funded it out of their pockets. And I helped to brief um, Bengalis or Americans who wanted to come up onto Capitol Hill. I helped to, um, we made a card files on every senator, every congressman, and we encouraged the citizen lobbyists to contact, to find out who was friendly with the um, legislator and maybe was a roommate of his in college. Anybody who might be a key contact that that congressman or senator might listen to. So I helped with office work. I think I, I insisted that some of the other workers be sure to cut their hair, not look like a hippie. We needed it to look mainstream. And um, I don't know, anything that needed to be done, um, I did. But basically, people looked to my husband, so you will hear about that. So many people all over America were doing what they could to dramatize the plight, to bring attention to it. So there were hunger strikes in front of the Pakistani embassy. I think at the time, the Pakistani embassy objected they could not con conduct their, their work, so it was shut down. And so the American police said, well, maybe you would like to have the White House as a location for your demonstration. So we thought, OK, that's better. And um, the day of the, the, we had planned a sewer pipe city demonstration in front of the White House. The sewer pipes did not get delivered on time. And it was so critical that we keep some story happening every day to keep that momentum building. Um, that that is when I I decided I'm bringing my baby. Maybe they'll take a picture. Just any baby can take a picture, and then the the um, reporters will get interested enough to stay around, talk to the people who are demonstrating, get a story, get greater understanding. I just to have genocide happening in on our watch it was so shocking. Um, don't, I don't think that I believed that this would be continuing to happen. You, you kind of want to believe that genocides are an aberration. But it kind of can happen. This is what comes out, whether it's, it's the greed and lust for power. Um, anyway, it's something that we have to be on guard against to help. So I guess that was, that was the shocker. And I, as I, I think I, I said at the, at the award ceremony, 
it just it does make you um, able to die happy that you were able to try and do something significant to be helpful to your common, your fellow man. <laughs> Further regarding the, the Saxby Church Amendment, whether technically it actually passed at one point or another, the, the momentum and the, the, there were everywhere in the bureaucracy um, and in global institutions such as the World Bank, there were good folks stepping in and trying to help Bangladesh and slow down exporting arms um, to Pakistan, and I believe that contributed toward the fact that the foreign aid bill didn't pass on time. It's so overwhelming and it is thrilling. We are, it, it is very meaningful to, to have it affirmed that we actually played a part that is perceived by the Bengalis as significant because we did what we could. It's, it's, it, there is so much talent and warmth. It, it, it's an amazing culture. It, it, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us to come and take pride in what we helped to create. But truly, it's the Bengalis who made it happen. It, they spoke for themselves. I think every Bengali who came was so impressive that Americans who don't know very much about the self the subcontinent certainly did not then. Um, they they couldn't they couldn't be denied. The fact that any the the openness we we did spend eight and a half years in Central Europe in where people had lived under communism for a long time. The faces are are so guarded, and every place we we look here, you, you make eye contact. People just light up and radiate, and it's the outpouring of gratitude and warmth. Brains, <laughs> it's just very, it's overwhelming. We've just loved it.